Just 10 days ago, the midterm elections sparked a rally in stocks and commodities. Here is your one-month chart. You can see where that rally started. It would be the 2nd and 3rd of November. But starting to see politicians hedging on big campaign promises saying, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't mean I'd really ban earmarks or cut spending. That maybe has something to do with why the markets come down. Yeah, and while they hem and haul, will the market start hedging its bets and back away from recent gains? We're going to ask Jerry Mills, CEO of the company B2B CFO, Tess Stovall, Senior Policy Advisor at the Third Way, and our Bulls and Bears panel, Charlie Gasparino, Dennis Neal, Tobin Smith, and Ken Kamen. All right, let's start with you, uh, Jerry. What do you think on a day like this where, yes, of course, we got that news out of China, but nonetheless, over the past couple of days, what you've started to hear are all of these guys, well, not all of them, but some of the Tea Party candidates and the newly minted Republican leaders in the House suddenly are saying, I'll fight for those earmarks. I'll fight for that pork for my state. Well, earmarks are about one half of one percent of the total federal spending so earmarks really don't have a lot to do with the total spending but there is an issue they I don't think they have the guts Liz to cut spending uh, give you just a quick analogy if I could if you have a, a young couple that's earning fifty thousand a year and you find out that they're spending eighty thousand a year and that thirty thousand the difference they're putting on charge cards we would sit them down and we'd say stop spending and then we find out they did it last year and they're going to do it next year that's what the federal government is doing in terms of our right. spending today what was the point of all of this we're changing and the democrats are awful and they can't handle it here come the republicans and now the first thing jerry mills just said was nobody's going to have the stomach to cut anything yeah well you know nothing like a little bit of re-election to make you forget exactly what was happening during the election i mean all of this kind of pairing back a bit it's a sign first of all that they weren't listening hard enough to what the voters were saying and second of all, it's a sign that they just aren't scared enough. Now, I don't think that this pulling back is going to mean that the stock market tumbles from here. I think that because of the Fed easing and all those other dynamic factors going on, we'll see stocks to continue to go up through the end of the year. But overall, over the longer term, out two years, uh, this makes me worry. Back to our original question. What about the markets falling since the election, which afterward we saw a bit of a bump, and suddenly as soon as these guys start opening their mouths and saying, you know what, I know you elected me to cut spending, but I'm just not going to make it happen. I'm going to fight for all the spending for our state. Do you think that works its way into the psyche of the markets? Or are we overthinking this? Well, absolutely. But I think people have to recognize that politicians now are building up their soundbite inventory. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't take too serious anything they're saying now. Because later on, when the real horse trading then why happens... Did we, why, did we right. ha why did we elect that? Oh, wait a second. Is it a little bit too, too, uh, is it too easy to extrapolate one day some statements that, you know, this, oh. the Republican, they're not going to be cutting anything? I mean, if you look at... But that's who, a dangerous trend. But, Hang on. Let's, can, no, let's but, have no, Ken you're finish. You're extrapolating one day. No, no, one no. Let's have work. Ken finish. Ken, take it. We're, Right now, what you wind up happening is everyone's rushing to the microphone to stake out the positions they used to have. So if they have to change them later, they can have sound bites. There's a that whole protected. slew of Tea Party candidates in there. You tell me they're not going to want to cut things? Well, well you know, know, I mean, Jerry Mills, Close the year uh, what, but, but businesses want to run. They want to have a better atmosphere in this country. Are they going to get it? Well, I have a different take on what's happening today. If you have a stock portfolio and you want to maximize the ROI on that, what you do is you're looking at, in six weeks, I've got to do something with this stock because the tax rate is going to go up on January 1st. And so I May. think some of this, uh, the, this, this going is anticipating that Congress and the administration will not be able to get together and keep capital gains at the low rate that it's right. at today. You talk, you're saying well, gridlock, gridlock is hurting the markets. I thought it was supposed to help the markets. It doesn't. It, it, it never has. It never has. It never has. Historically, 9.8% with the gridlock, 17% in the third year of presidential cycle okay. without Even okay. David Stockman, a, Reagan, uh, a Reaganite, and even Martin Feldstein, also a Reaganite, say at some point, maybe a year or two from now, you have got to raise taxes on the upper tier. Uh, well, uh, let me, let me, let's break a myth. If we take the adjusted gross income, Liz, of every taxpayer that's earning seven hundred thousand dollars or more and if we, instead of tax, taxing them fifty or sixty percent if we take all of their money we can run the federal government for about thirty days the money is not in the rich the money is in two places uh, to reduce spending first 
and in taxing the middle class. So we've got to get off this myth. We are not going to pull out of this issue. And by the way, the president is told disingenuous what he said. He knows what the numbers are. Sure. 2.2 million revenue, 3.5 million in spending. Jerry, we know are what the you numbers saying are. tax the middle class and not the rich? I just want to clarify this from you. I'm saying that first we stop the bleeding and we, we balance our budget. Then we have a long-term plan because, uh, as you we know, budget, we have about we have 12 to tax billion. Anybody? The more we well, engage we in the conversation, a, we, the more we engage no, in the no, conversation no. about revenue, the, the more we're all being distracted by the real issue, which is the spending. spending. All well, right, remember, guys. look at the figures, guys. Okay. Three trillion dollars to do the tax cuts for the middle class, seven hundred billion for the rich. Fifty-one percent of people not paying one dime. All right, everybody want to get so, you oh all want to get the final word. You're numbers. all smart at doing that. Numbers, good numbers here. Thank Our, you. Today, China announced it's imposing some strict new rules, like forbidding foreign companies from buying property over there. To our bulls and bears, on what happens to U.S. in this China syndrome? Ken, you know the Buick plant in China is going gangbusters, and the cars represent quite a bit of the sales that GM is having here. No surprise, they went want in on a company sure. like this. Uh, well, look, it goes to the global reality. We are every country is every other country's producer and consumer. We're all in a place where we're living in the same fishbowl and economies are merging. I mean, it, it, people really have to have a much more global stance. And I, to hand ring as the world kind of tweaks all these things, I'm not getting myself all too nuts about China's announcements or whatever they want to do because the demand is really there. We're, we're, we're struggling with our own financial woes ourselves in figuring out what but to do. But slowing growth, I mean, we would kill for the growth that China will slow to, right, guys? Well, yeah, for but, sure. But, Tess, what's going on is, I mean, China's workers make nothing, make $3,700 you know, per capita on average every year. And so when they've got inflation going like gangbusters over there, then they have to raise rates and then our markets have a transient stroke. Well, listen, I mean, we, we can't deny the importance of the Chinese economy. You know, as I said, it, it's, you know, we, everyone's economy plays off the other person's. But, you know, we also have to worry about how are we going to strengthen our own economy and how are the individuals within our own economy going to become more confident and start spending more, which really will boost our economy and put us in a better position. Stop taxing. Yeah, but, but look at China. The, the, their currency went up 1.5% in the last three days. I thought that was supposed to heal everything. Right. I thought that that was the whole idea. We, we, we're on this you know, myth that somehow if the, wall, if the Chinese currency goes up, then we're going to be able to compete. Well, that's a bunch of BS. It is. It is. Uh, Jerry, it's a bunch of BS. No Jerry, go ahead. Well, China is a serious economic threat. They're the second largest economy in the world. Uh, what we're not talking about <clears throat> is their national debt compared to their GDP is only 19%. So our president needs to be criticized and Congress because we're about 83% uh, debt to our, yeah, but, our GDP. But Charlie, yeah. And, Go ahead. And, and, and this, is, this is a danger. We remember we're, we're getting close to, we're going towards 100%. Greece had a meltdown when they had a 115% ratio. China is a serious threat because they're financially I hear about positioned. Your debt, but Dennis, really the yeah. issue with China is their monetary base is almost double the size of the U.S. They've been printing money like crazy. But more importantly for me, how can China be that big of a threat to us if they own over a trillion dollars in U.S. securities, U.S. treasuries? Do they well, dare threaten our economy? Well, they, they can't can afford stop, to. Because they can stop buying it at some point. Well, but they're not. But holdings. they haven't. But then their holdings will plunge. Yeah. They have not. Know, and well, they, they, well, they, well, how do you know they won't? Yeah, suppose they cut back somewhat. I mean, they, they already have. Well, well but and it could hurt us if they cut back a little more. They only yeah. bought fifty I mean, billion I just, dollars. I just think. I, listen, I just think anytime you leverage yourself to one source, yeah, it's like investing in one stock. Sure, we're investing in. That stock, I think we got a problem. Kenny, uh, Kenny, you quickly, are you worried about it? Are you worried more about Bernanke or China? I, right now, I'm actually worried more about what's happening in our own neighborhood. I think that what we're doing as far as monetizing the debt, for lack of a better phrase, is something we all need to be concerned Gary, about. Gary, suppose we go into a double dip recession. What do you think about that? And that's what Bernanke. You mean I'm Jerry. Not, uh, Jerry, I'm sorry. That's what Bernanke really worries about mm -hmm. here. Us falling into a double dip recession. If that happens, unemployment goes up to 10 and a half, 11 percent. You're gonna have another banking crisis. What's the worst? Which which evil is worse? I think it's, e it's more evil to, to like, let it fall into to another recession. I mean, I think that's a big problem. But even passing the stress test, Charlie, the banks, if we went into recession, boom. Just, just you believe those? They're, they're, By the way, just a, Dennis, they, Dennis, they call those stress tests on Wall Street feather tests. Right. So right. You know that. Jerry, you get that last word. What, are you guys friendly now? <laughs> well, but, yes. just wait. I, I, agree, I agree that I don't think that China's going to intentionally hurt us. What they, they're, they're exporting 1.5 trillion in exports today. They have the biggest threat to take jobs away from Americans. That's what I'm more concerned about. I'm concerned more about that than I am inflation. I don't want to lose more American jobs.